situation in Ukraine right now, where the U.S. is sending Marines in to beef up security at the United States Embassy in Kiev. Meanwhile, the future of Ukraine is hanging in the balance between East and West. On one side is the United States and the European Union. On the other side, Russia. It's a tug of war that could have some grave consequences. Let's discuss what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, important implications for the United States. The California Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff is here uh, joining us. He's a key member of the Senate Select, the House Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, so what do you think? Are we on the eve right now of a potential Cold War between the U.S. and Russia, in part because of Ukraine? Well, I, I think that's certainly the perspective that Mr. Putin has, and I think he's had it for some time. Uh, it isn't going to be a return to the Cold War, but nonetheless, I think that the United States should be very forward-leaning on the Ukraine. Uh, this involves not only the future of the, the uh, democracy in the Ukraine, but also the countries around Russia and Russia itself. Uh, I don't think we should uh, shy away at all from uh, promoting our core value of democracy. But won't that irritate Putin and the Russians to the point that they would retaliate? Uh, it certainly will irritate Putin and the Russians, but I also think that the Russians uh, uh, respect strength. Uh, they expect us to be forceful in the promotion of our values. They may not like it. We don't like what the Russians do either, but I think they'll, they'll respect it. And what's more, I think that uh, those that are pushing for democracy around the world uh, really count on the United States to continue to be that beacon. Uh, so I think that we ought to be working with the EU on uh, financial assistance and, and a package of reform. I think we ought to be very outspoken in terms of the, uh, the peaceful right of the Ukrainians to um, self-determination and democracy. Uh, and I don't think we should shy away from this one bit. Because here's one of the concerns that has been expressed to me, and I'm anxious to get your uh, reaction to this, that there is, of course, a, a pro-European, pro-American <coughs> excuse me, element in the streets of uh, Ukraine right now. <coughs> Uh, but there's also a pro-Russian element in Ukraine right now, and there potentially could be a real confrontation, maybe not a Syria-like civil war or something like that, but there could be some real battles. Uh, that's certainly possible, and, you know, I think the Russians have the capability of uh, trying to bring that kind of a confrontation about on the street. We have not seen, by any means, the end of Putin playing his cards here. Uh, this is part of the reason why, uh, while I think we need to be very forward-leaning in Ukraine, we want to avoid uh, doing things that are unnecessarily provocative. We want to urge the Ukrainians to be inclusive uh, in the next government, bring in all parties, including the pro-Russia party. I think that's very important because this is part and parcel of the Ukraine. But, uh, but again, I think that we uh, should be very outspoken uh, and very helpful in terms of financial assistance to keep Ukraine on the path to democracy. Not just U.S. financial assistance, because there's a limited amount of U.S. money right now, but getting others to, to contribute to the Europeans specifically. Uh, absolutely. And because Putin the, keeps saying uh, he's going to pump in billions if they go with Russia. Well, and to some degree, we're in a bidding war. Uh, but I think we have to recognize what's at stake here is not only the future for the people of Ukraine, but for the, future, the, for the future of the people in that entire region and indeed in Russia itself. What do you make of this decision to beef up the security at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev and send some more Marines over there? Well, I think we have to you know, be on the lookout for uh, Russian efforts to provoke, uh, to uh, create even more of a, a crisis there that might just their intervention in some form uh, and attacks on the uh, U.S. Uh, embassy that might be something in the Russian playbook uh, or in the playbook of extremists within the Ukraine. I think it's very prudent and I, I think they're wise to do it. Bottom line, uh, where is it heading in Ukraine right now? Because uh, there's a new government that seems to be coming into place. They're looking for the, uh, the ex-president Yanukovych. We don't, uh, do you know where he is? Does the U.S. intelligence community have any idea where this guy is? Uh, you know, they probably have some idea. I'm not sure whether they have pinpointed it or wh whether even if they did, they'd want to broadcast that. In terms of where we're heading, I don't think we know. I think there are a lot of chapters yet to be told here. Uh, you know, it looked just a couple weeks ago that Putin had pulled a coup with that uh, $15 billion offer. Uh, and then it looks to this, this week as if we're in a very different chapter. How it will look next week, we can't say. But we should be doing everything we can to make it peaceful, inclusive, and a democratic future. And very quickly, the decision by the U.S. to expel three Venezuelan diplomats from Washington in retaliation for the Venezuelan decision to expel three American diplomats from Venezuela. Uh, it's the right call. And, you know, both in Venezuela, the Ukraine, and around the world, we shouldn't shy away from promotion of peaceful protest and democracy. Democracy pr promotion got a bad name under the last administration, but it is a core value of ours, and I think we ought to be very uh, forward speaking about it. And, and I think the retaliatory measure 
of expelling those diplomats was the right call. Adam Schiff is a member of the Foreign Operations Subcommittee in the House, also the Intelligence Committee. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, Will.